Brett Jones. Thanks for joining me on the podcast again. Mimi, it's fantastic to have the opportunity to be on again and speak to you and your audience and uh, kind of get through some various topics today. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, you know, I was looking up as I, I try to be diligent and and this is number seven for us. So at this point, I stopped prepping for this because it's no longer an interview. It's just a conversation. <laughs> Understood and appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's nice is um, I do get to kind of see you a little bit more often because you are, you know, coaching uh, Oscar. And so I get to pop in and, and do cameos. So we get we get a chance to catch up as well. And I know you've been very busy um, with a million things. But of course, everyone's always asking you about your book. And, um, you know, I always toy around with the idea of, quote unquote, writing something. And it's mm -hmm. too daunting. So I don't. But I know you've done articles like forever. Um, what's the difference between that process and actual book writing process? Because this is obviously not your first one either, but you know, I know that this one's been kind of in the, in the works. Yeah. I mean, I've, I'd say I've, uh, I've really have three main writing avenues. Uh, one is the article. The other are manuals or, uh, you know, more guides and manuals. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that for kettlebells from the center, kettlebells from the ground up, um, all of the manuals and curriculum that we do within Strong First and FMS. Uh, and then uh, this uh, book project, which I um, may be calling it a book is a little grandiose, but uh, <laughs> it, it'll at least come out in some sort of electronic format. Um, so the writing process, if I break that down into those different categories, uh, if it's an article, it's usually, um, I really think bite size. Uh, I just want to cover one to three things. Um, it's going to be pretty targeted. I try to be very practical. Um, even if there is, uh, some conceptual, uh, sort of information in there, how do we take that and make it actionable and, and, and help people, um, from a writing standpoint. So kind of the, the idea will be there. Somebody will contact me or I'll be working with a student and something will happen in a session. I'm like, that's an article. Um, or I see something on social media that's a consistent question. And I'm like, that's an article. And, mm -hmm. and so, so I've got 60 some articles that are on the strong first website, a, a bunch that I'd done previously within the previous organization, FMS, things of that nature. So I got a bunch of stuff that's out there. Um, and that's not a huge amount. There are people who have written hundreds of articles. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm prolific in, 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 in my <laughs> well, writing. It's all comparative because, you know, compared to the amount of articles I've written. <laughs> right. True. True. Um, but I think once I've got that kind of general idea of um, the, the topic um, that I would like to take on, uh, I actually go and I find a quote uh, from anybody really, but uh, it could be re it, you know, somewhat related to the topic. Um, I've used quotes from architects when I'm talking about structure and, and function. Um, I've used John Wooden uh, quotes, and you can almost always find a John Wooden quote that will, that will work uh, in, a, in a given situation. Um, so, the, the quote for me uh, spurs my writing process. It's, it's actually hard for me to get started on an article if I don't go find a quote first. Okay. And that kind of is is the 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 push creatively to uh, to start down that. Um, I'm a I'm a pretty lighthearted uh, sort of sort of guy. I'm goofy. I'm good with movie quotes. You know, I, I try to I'm aware. I try to <laughs> and I you know I try to keep the article uh, pretty lighthearted, but yet practical. And you know, in that standpoint, um, from a teaching standpoint, I believe if you're not laughing, you're not learning. So I try to inject some sort of humor, you know, into the into the article and, and make it something that's enjoyable to read. Uh, but they're typically pretty short, you know, and, and I think that's where people run into barriers and feeling like, oh, I could never do that. Well, you're not writing the next great American novel. <laughs> you're just putting out a twelve hundred word article. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it doesn't twelve hundred to two thousand word article. It doesn't have to be anything that's that's expansive. And I'll be in the middle of an article and realize that I've just written another article and I need to separate that off and get back to the, you know, the original idea. Um, but that's kind of the article uh, standpoint. And I think uh, from manuals, it's obviously just very direct. Um, you're trying to transmit information in a very straightforward manner. 
how do you do this exercise? What are the things you're looking for? What are the coaching cues? You know, it's, it's very practical, um, very, very technical. direct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very technical. Yeah. Uh, and then for the book, I kind of did a combination. Yeah. And I think you may have had a sneak peek uh, at it. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's, there's movie quotes scattered throughout. And, and that was kind of one of the first feedbacks that I got because I kind of did the same thing that you did. And I've threatened to write a book for years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, finally, you know, after cancer and everything and, and some conversations, it's like, okay, let's get this done. And uh, I had sent an early version to, um, to a colleague and, and he came back with, where are you in this? He's like, I, I want the movie quotes. I want the, I want, the, where are you? Like, I don't, I'm not reading you in this. And I had kind of done that same thing to myself. I had gotten kind of overwhelmed by the project, by the idea of, of doing this. And I kind of, I wasn't writing like me. You know, mm -hmm. when I write an article, I have a, uh, I have a voice I, you can, you can read it and you know, I wrote it. Um, so I went back and really brought that to the, to the book. And, um, but again, it's, uh, it's, you know, I have enhanced your calm, John Spartan as, as one of the, uh, one of the quotes that's in there. Um, so, you know, there's just all kinds of, there's Monty Python in, in the book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I'm getting ready to start a chapter or start a page of the, of the book, um, coming up with a quote that just helps coordinate that thought and, yeah. and gives uh, some relevance uh, back. Like I had written an article. Um, it was actually it was just an email communication <clears throat> with uh, the certified instructors. And I found a George Bernard Shaw quote that the biggest illusion in communication is that it's happened. <laughs> and like many problems in our, in our life could be uh, that, that quote yeah. pretty much nails a lot of issues. Uh, 100%, so. 100%. And, and do your quotes just, do you, I know because it's been a long time, like you've cataloged and you've, you have them and, and we've talked extensively, I think in movie quotes at some point in time, mm -hmm. but like, is it just a simple like Google search or do you kind of like, Oh, I just saw this movie the other day. So it comes to you or like, what's the, what, what is the process of finding those quotes for you? It was, do you go down the rabbit hole and then just, or do you have like an ongoing list or? No, it's Google. Um, okay. you know, I'll, I'll Google like, uh, quotes on structure and function. Okay. Um, okay. And, and then it kind of Google does its magic and <laughs> Google does its magic. And then you go to Google images and, mm -hmm. and you get the, yeah, there they are. Mm -hmm. And you got to sift through, you know, I'll start with an idea for a quote in one direction and then I, I won't find what I'm looking for. Right. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like the old Supreme Court justice. Uh, I can't tell you what pornography is, but I know it when I see it. Um, <laughs> I don't know the quote I'm looking for, but I know right. it when I see it. Uh -huh. um, right. <laughs> exactly. Just that's the one. Um, exactly. Exactly. I, I, I get that. Cause I also forever have always loved quotes, like even like musically, like back in high school when we would pass notes, like I always wanted to have like a little music quote or something. Cause it just, it's just fun. And um, it also shares a bit of who you are, right? Like it's a kind yeah. of a window to your personality. So, and I, I do feel like that was one of our first conversations. I was like, oh, and you love eighties movies and you love this. And I'm like, ah, oh, I am now connected to Brett Jones. We now be friends. So <laughs> That's, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah. And, it, and it is. I think that, you know, quotes are enduring uh, because they are, you know, um, Ben Franklin said, you know, family and fish, both of them start to stink after three days. Um, <laughs> you know, I use that one all the time in reference to, you know, family visiting or, you know, things like that. Um, there are these bite sized little, th little things that really drive points home. Yeah. Uh, really help highlight issues. You know, when, when I was uh, a quote that I've used for a long time from Winston Churchill, uh, when you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> and you know, that, uh, that, you know, whether it was cancer or, you know, anything else that I was going through, you know, just kind of keeping that quote in mind that, uh, um, you know, the, the, it just, they're, they're enduring because they have that impact. Yeah, they can yeah. they can help get us through certain situations. They can highlight certain ideas. Um, so I'm I'm just a I'm a big fan. Maybe yeah. one day 
Someone will quote me. I uh, think you've already been quoted a lot, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I can actually attest to that being that I'm around Oscar when he's coaching and things. And so I get to hear all of his, you know, mentors and coaches um, kind of reiterate back. He actually says like, he says nothing original. This is all stolen <laughs> kind of bit. So it's funny. One of my students a long time ago was like, I'm going to write a journal of all of the things that you've said as quotes. I'm like, Oh God, (laughs) because he goes, wow, that's harsh, you know? And they said, they're just going to read it to me one day of all of like the things I have yelled at my students. And that kind of made me (laughs) paranoid. I'm like, Oh man, that would be cringeworthy. And I'm like, taken out of context. (laughs) That's that's right. (laughs) So your quotes are going to be all, you know, very like, thought out and, 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 and intentional and very purposeful. And mine will just sound like really cruel and just horrible. You call that a kick? Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it, it can get painful. Um, I talk to a lot of fiction writers, right? I talked to a lot mm-hmm. of comic creators and other authors on the show. And one of the things that always makes me curious because I kind of have experienced what you have where I'll be writing something. I'm like, Oh, now I've gone into something else, but that wasn't the point of this. So then it becomes two or three things because I tend to get a little bit tangenty. Um, <clears throat> podcast listeners are just chuckling now. <laughs> pretty much, I got to change the name of this whole podcast to just tangent, but um, does writer's block also happen for things that are like nonfiction and very structural and instructional in that nature? Cause it's, it's kind of a different world, but I would imagine there are some days you just don't want to write or it's just not working um, or unless you're just Brett Jones and it's always perfect. <laughs> no, uh, 100%. Um, and, and it was funny. It took me uh, a long time after treatment to mm-hmm. get back to where I felt like I could write, like yeah. where I felt like I could be creative. And, you know, I, I don't know. I'd love to come up with three different excuses for why that was the case. Yeah. Um, but then it was, but yeah, definitely there's times where I sit down and I'm like, yeah, this isn't happening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I do try to, uh, even though I'm writing an article that could be on, you know, one aspect of the swing, like there's days where it's just, you know, mental mush and there's just nothing coming out. And so, um, one of the things, and this is going to sound like such a weird, uh, connection, but uh, I have two games on my phone. Okay. I have solitaire uh-huh. and I have like a word wordscape game or whatever okay. it is. Um, and what one of the things that I've, and I do that purely just for mental checkout time. Right. But what I've discovered is uh, two things with the word game. Um, if I shut the app down and I go do something else for five or 10 minutes and I open the app back up, the answer is right there. Like I could sit there and stare at the screen and struggle for what the next word is for 10, 15 minutes. And then I shut the app down and I come back to it later and open the app and I'm like, oh, that's the end, you know, and I, and I complete the puzzle. Um, so there are times where not grinding is the answer, where stepping away, clearing the headspace and your, your brain's back, background processing on that anyway. So if you just let that background processing happen and then come back to it, the answer is usually waiting, you know, right there. Mm -hmm. Um, But then also playing solitaire, which sounds like, you know, really what the hell lessons could you learn from solitaire? Um, It's, uh, it's awareness. You know, the, the answer can be sitting right there. I Mm -hmm. just need to move that three over to that four (laughs) and I will, you know, that's going to, make let me complete the, the the sequence yeah and i'll stare at the screen and not see the three yeah <laughs> so it's 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 opening your mind and having that awareness and and allowing you know that that information to come in because sometimes when you're trying to when you're trying to look at every detail you're going to miss a detail you know there's a famous study within um uh it's a radiology study actually and and it, it was more on attentiveness and focus. And, and so I can't remember who the researchers were, but what they did with these radiologists who were looking for tumors in the lungs, they put a picture of a gorilla in the x-ray and the vast majority of radiologists that were looking at the, the x-rays did not see the gorilla. Oh my gosh. It's because they were, they were looking so hard for the right. tumors 
Mm-hmm. They didn't see and the gorilla. Focusing. Yeah. And yeah. so you'd, you'd think, well, there's a freaking gorilla in, in the in the x-ray. And to, to novices and people that don't know what they're looking at, you're like, I'm pretty sure there shouldn't be a gorilla in, in your lawn. <laughs> like, why is that there? Yeah. But the radiologist missed it. Yeah. And there's other studies that you can look at. And, and there's a really famous one where they're, they're showing a video of people coming on and off of a basketball court, bouncing the ball and, and passing the ball and doing different things. Well, at a certain point in the video, this guy in a gorilla suit walks out onto the court, you know, turns and does the, the waving of the hands and then walks off. And when you show this to people, if you've given them a task, like count how many basketballs right. are, are in there. They don't see the gorilla. Wow. That's and so, yeah, I, I think we've maybe tiptoed away from writing for just a second, but like the, the, to the concept of writer's block and, and mm-hmm. things of that nature, um, there are times where, you know, you can sit and grind and you can try to force the words out or you can take a break for 10 or 15, 30 minutes, mm-hmm. go do something else, maybe train, maybe get a little workout in, swing some Indian clubs, whatever. Um, and then come back mm-hmm. and everything will be much fresher and, you, and you'll be much more productive. <clears throat> yeah. And that's kind of interesting because I feel like um, my question now for you is because you talk about like grinding isn't always a thing or just trying to push through it. And that kind of connects a lot to um, working out as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's totally like asking for a friend, like when you don't want to work out, but you <laughs> should be, and it's supposed to be a workout day. <laughs> And I didn't sleep all night. Um, I mean, my friend didn't sleep all night. Um, so, <laughs> like, at what point is, is is that process different for you? So, first, personally, like, you have a process for writer's block or I'm doing, like, this type of work. Um, does that also apply for, like, it's my set day of, you know, whatever your all your crazy stuff? stuff with the huge bell in front of your door that you do. And um, the one that doesn't go upstairs, I'm like, Oh, he's switching up his area. Oscar's like that bell is ridiculously heavy. And so why would one bring it upstairs? That's why he's downstairs. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> no, tr- True story. It, 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 uh, I, when I started training again, after cancer, I took the heavy bells yes. uh, out of the third floor uh, office that I have. Yeah. Uh, and that one ended up there. And so if I want to use it now, I just go to it. I, I, I'm <laughs> I go not to going, the bell. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm way easier to move than, than right. that bell is. Exactly. It's really um, funny, though, because, you know, I just but is it the same for you? Like, do you like, go, OK, you know what? Let me go do something else. And then I'm going to set this. Or are you so programmed with your discipline of workout that it just happens? Um, I, well, I'd say f- I would I would kind of shift the, the conversation just a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. I enjoy training. Right. Um, so for me, I, nine times out of 10, okay. like I, I stop what I'm doing and I get my workout in because I, I just enjoy training right, I, right. and, and because of the, the intuitive nature and in, in way I, in, in which I train, um, and I'm looking at my training log over here to my right, um, is I just come up with something for the day that I, I'm actually excited to, to go do Okay, like it, it, it's motivating now. On the days where I'm like, ugh, I just, I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. There's, there's two ways to handle that. Number one is uh, get started. Do the foam roll, mm-hmm. do the movement prep, get to that first get up and see where you are. Usually by that point, it's the, the engine started and mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I'm, I'm good. I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll get this done. But there's been days where I, I, I do the foam roll. I do my movement prep. I get to the first get up and I'm like, nah, I'm just going to do a couple get ups today. <laughs> and that's it. You know, just pull the plug. Yeah. Yeah. And there's days where, to your point, due to missing sleep, you know, maybe, you know, diet wasn't great the, the day before and, and my diet's never great. Um, <laughs> other than the fact that I just eat things I enjoy eating. Um <laughs> then I'll skip a day. Like I'm, I'm not, um, I I'm being 50 and going through some of the things that I've, that I've been through. I, I recognize there are days where I got to listen to my body and say, nah, today's a rest day. Mm-hmm. Um, like I technically I should train today. 
Um, I'm super busy. I'm call to call to call to call throughout the entire day. I've got a mm-hmm. bunch of different projects, background processing my brain that I need to make get stuff done on. Um, I'm probably not going to train today. And I'm okay with that because mm-hmm. I will on Thursday. <laughs> and and so you know, it, opening up that um, opening up that schedule, um, you have to give yourself permission to be able to adapt on the fly. Yeah, but you can't always give yourself right, the right, 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 right. Because and that's people's fear when when you read the memes on social media about dedication and you know not skipping and you yeah. know the only the only bad workout is the one you missed and you mm-hmm. know all of these kind of crap memes um you got to be able to adjust but you can't always give yourself the out and so over time if you realize you're always giving yourself the out a couple of answers there maybe you're trying to force yourself to do something that you don't enjoy Mm -hmm. like if if you hate barbell training and you have to go in the gym and lift barbells how how long are you going to keep doing that Mm -hmm. like that's not going to be sustainable Right. Um, right. So at that point, if you're always giving yourself the out, look at, look at what you're trying to do. Maybe it's time to switch things up. Yeah. Yeah. Makes complete sense because you pretty much started with that answer, which was like, well, I really love doing that. So I don't really have an issue with, oh, I don't want to do that right now. Um, But you're right. Like getting moving and foam rolling that, but usually by then you're like, oh, I'm feeling really, I'm feeling better than I did a minute ago. And so, yeah. Um, and it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, I was talking to Oscar. I was like, oh, you know, I don't even know what I'm talking about with Brett today. I'm just going to wing it and we're going to just catch up on air. And um, you're, you're one of those guests now because we're, we're in the friend zone. <laughs> so you don't get the um, very, very extensive prep treatment of like, I have serious interview questions and I am a podcaster thing. But um, he was like kind of half teasingly like, you know, maybe you could just talk about when students disappoint you <laughs> or n- and when you don't allow your students to quit. And it, it's kind of in the same theme of what we're talking about, though, because as a coach, you're now like, which is what my for me is what I would say is we'll get a good coach because they'll help hold you accountable. And they're usually very motivating. And they're the ones that kind of help guide you, um, because when you're trying to do things on your own, unless you're Brett Jones or someone who literally like this is your life and what you enjoy doing, lifelong martial artists, lifelong, you know, athletes like that's what they do. Right. That's who they are. But average people, I really think having that environment, whether it's a class environment or an actual expert to guide you is really it takes that part out of it, right? Because all you have, then you just have to show up, which is a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but, but as the coach, right? At what point are you kind of like making that determination of knowing, like, okay, I really need to keep pushing this person? Or like, do you just, is there like a bunch of factors or is there a um, formula in your brain that you use as you coach people to kind of know, like, okay, are we going to grind through this or where the limits are? Um, I'm going to separate that into two conversations okay. um, from the motivation standpoint. Mm-hmm. If you are hiring me for accountability and motivation, uh, I don't do that. <laughs> um, if I ask you to do something and you don't do it, I'm going right. to shrug my shoulders and say, okay, like moving on. Like mm-hmm. uh, we, I, I know what you need to be doing. Uh, you're choosing not to do it we should probably answer that question at some point as to why you're choosing not to do it. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, I'm not the guy that's sending you the text. Um, did you get your workout in today? Right. Right. Like, right. I, that's not me. Like yeah. I, I'll meet you halfway. I will guide you. I will coach you. Mm-hmm. You'll, you will know what to do and change and fix and, and what, what you should be doing. Uh, and you know, it's like a certain unnamed individual that we both know um, <laughs> who, um, at one point with the programming um, took it in a direction that I maybe had not suggested. And so we had to readjust. Now things are moving forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and I, but I give people some, some wiggle room, right? Yeah. Um, Life happens. There's stress going on that people may not share. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking of a story from coach Boyle, um, who, uh, coach Mike Boyle in the Boston area. Yeah. Um, another pal. (laughs) Yeah. He's, he's great. (laughs) Um, and he, he was telling the story because, you know, it's with trainers, uh, what some trainers will say is, well, this person isn't serious enough to work with me. 
I'm going to fire that client because they're not serious enough to work with me. Uh, yeah. And Coach Boyle, you know, he had this guy come in and uh, he'd been missing some sessions. And Coach Boyle was going to go up to him and ask him, you know, if he wanted to re up because you know he'd been missing a bunch of sessions. Right. And, you know, this if this isn't working for you, you know, it's 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 okay. Uh, this guy comes back with the story of uh, what you know. I lost my wife this year, and uh, just getting these sessions in when I could do it really helped me get through. And so you guys were a big part of me handling that loss. Mm-hmm. And Coach Boyle's like, "Well, I had no idea that that was going on." Yeah. And so you know the and I hate to say it, but it's usually younger trainers who think they're all that in a bag of chips, and um, you know something may be going on that I don't know about. And mm-hmm. the fact that you're missing sessions. It's okay because this isn't where your attention really needs to be right now, but I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you want to get in that next session, I'm good. Let's do it. Um, we need to make an adjustment. Let's make an adjustment. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good. So from the motivation standpoint, I'll meet you where you are. I'll help guide you where you want to be. I ain't dragging you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, in, in the direction of, of when to grind, you know, when do you kind of hold that accountability and, and put a little pressure on people? Um, I do that so rarely. Um, I, usually the people that I'm working with, uh, they're, they bought in, they're dedicated, they're, they're going to do it. Um, and so I, I just get to have that conversation very rarely. But I do think from a general standpoint, um, it's right back to that conversation of um, it's okay to adjust, mm-hmm. but don't always give yourself an out. Yeah. And if you're always giving yourself an out, let's, let's, let's figure out why. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I find the same with, with the Kung Fu training and everything with the balance, because it, like you said, people don't really, you don't have also in it for our environment, it's a class environment, like to go up and be like, so what's going on in your life right now? And why weren't you, you know, you don't have all these, this time to kind of delve in and you don't really know what people are going through. Um, yeah. So like, we, you know, we, we try to do check-ins, but it's funny whenever I see people like at Publix or out and about at a store, they, they're they like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I haven't been in class because of this is this, this. And I'm like, all right, I didn't ask, you know, it's okay. Yeah, like we know good. we're not the center of everyone else's world. I get that it's my center and my world. <laughs> <laughs> but we, it's funny what people think you expect, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of it where if you have a coach, that already is the accountability part because um, we kind of teased about like, well, we don't want to let Brett Jones down. We don't want to let coach down because it makes <laughs> us feel bad, right? And that's not you putting that on, a, on you know, the, the this client or student, but it's more like, for us, like we want to make our teachers and coaches proud. We want to do that. And if you're a good student, then that, that kind of naturally happens. Like you shouldn't have to drag someone into the gym. (laughs) That definitely, like you said, this is probably not where you want to be if you're dragging them in there. So yeah. (laughs) So what's kind of um, interesting is actually I, I was looking at the the calendar. I'm like, Oh my gosh, we haven't talked in um, on the podcast. We haven't talked in almost like, um, six, eight months or something. So I was like, mm. oh, we're way due. We're way, way past due. And I was looking and I think it's four years now um, that we've been, we've had you on air because the first person wow. from your family I actually had on air was Cam and um, it's March. So it's around the time of March for our lives, anniversary time. And um, when all of the the legislative stuff with the with the gun control was going on and the walkouts with the kids. And so I had her on and she was amazing. And that's kind of how we actually reconnected was was through her, ironically. And um, so I just wanted to check in, see how she's doing. And I know like she's off in college now, I think. And so I, it's just it's just crazy how how quickly time goes. But um, but yeah, I, I, th- I was just thinking back like, wow, we've really kind of come full circle here. And it's like for your anniversary. <laughs> wow. That's that's impressive. I I I didn't realize it'd been been that long, mm-hmm. um, and you know I've I've certainly reached the point in my life where I'm like, uh, yeah, that was just last year, and somebody's like, no, that was <laughs> like do. six years ago. Yes. Like, but uh, she's doing fantastic. Uh, she is she is at uh, university now and um, uh, Kent State University. She's part of the student government. She's mm-hmm. uh, actively involved. Uh, her and the student government group were at uh, the Columbus. Uh, state capital and, and talking to representatives and uh, against uh, two bills that are up 
uh, yeah. for vote uh, within uh, within Ohio. And, um, you know, she just continues to be a leader and a motivator and uh, an, an advocate uh, yeah. on, on different issues. And she's uh, I she's just great. I know. I, I, and I knew she would be like, I only got to talk to her for an hour and um, I was just so blown away. And it actually started because we had seen her post online and Oscar's like, Oh my gosh, you, you definitely need to have her. Cause I was looking for youths to have on to speak out about it. And I mean, when I spoke to her, I was like, wow, she's just exceptional. And I mean, it's so wonderful to hear that, sh- that we have, um, you know, younger individuals who are interested in the legislative process and wants to be an advocate and wants to get involved because that's really how it's going to make a difference. And, um, as you know, it's like something I've been really passionate about lately and working on, and I'll be straight up honest. I hate the legislative process <laughs> and I hated going to Tallahassee again. I'm in Florida, so it's it's a bit more of a, a it's talk about when they always say battleground state and all that with votes and all. I mean, that's like not even the right word for it. It is just really, really, really polarizing and it's really, really stressful. So um, I know from my experience of just everything that I went through with my bill, it was just um Oh, man, it's it's not for the lighthearted. That's for sure. So I am very excited to hear that the younger, stronger individuals are coming up <laughs> that are going to be able to fight those fights because it's really it's really tough. And um, I, I don't I don't know what that world is like until just this last year. It's been it's been really a, a, quite a learning experience for me because I didn't do student government in high school or anything like that. I mean, if I did, I wouldn't remember anything anyway. It was like over 20 something <laughs> years ago. So yeah, long enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of wild, right? Like that whole, that whole world. So, and, and you know me, I just dabble in so many different things. I don't know how I get myself into these situations. <laughs> I say that a lot. And I think you say that a lot too, for different reasons. Like, I think yeah. we're like, well, how did I get myself into this situation? Now I've committed to this and now I've committed to that. I think off air, you and I were talking about the, the great superpower of saying no, <laughs> It's, it's huge. And I, I struggle with it. And, and just before, before we move on from that, because you're, you're trying to uh, gloss over your, your work and accomplishments <laughs> there uh, from a distance, I have been very impressed in, in seeing you. you pursue that and, and going through that process and being an advocate uh, for a really important issue and, and something that just blows my mind that we even have to legislate that. Like the, mm-hmm. the, the, the idea that that's not, uh, I, I just, Ah, I, I, I don't <laughs> I don't know what to say about that other than the yeah. fact that we have to legislate it is insane. Yeah. Um, but but again, I've I just been been impressed by your your work on that and, and how you've pursued it. So um, well, thank you did, so much. Didn't want you to get get out of here without. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh, I highlighting know that. Yeah, no, I um, appreciate that. I mean, you're right. And what's interesting about that is I didn't realize it wasn't there. Right. I mean, I knew I didn't learn about AAPI history growing up and I know as an adult looking back, oh, this is why I felt certain ways. This is why this, ha-, you know, and then you look historically and then you go to look at um, legislation because like no one in their right mind goes through and reads like Florida congressional like record. You know, you don't read the legislative bills and you're like, oh, interesting. There are certain <laughs> things that are included and things that are excluded specifically. And then you look nationwide. And you're like, oh, lots of things are excluded nationwide. And I'm like, wow, we have a long way to go. And um, education is is already kind of a, a, a lacking area. I feel like we just focus on test taking versus educating. I think they're two different things. And our, I think our country's gotten confused about that. But but I do appreciate your 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 kindness. So Thank you. <laughs> well, I think it's it's fascinating, uh, and just to key on something that that you just said there, and and kind of tying in with a conversation I actually had recently with Cameron, um, the 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 concept of critical race theory and mm-hmm. the knee jerk reaction you get from people when when you say systemic racism mm-hmm. that there is systemic mm-hmm. racism in America, there is an automatic knee jerk reaction. Yeah. That, 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 no, that's not true. Well. It is. <laughs> and the reason we're unaware of it is, to your point, we're not taught. It. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go kind of around the circle here, but uh, I, I watched Watchmen, mm-hmm. right? 
And so the, the opening HBO of, Watchmen, the HBO or, Watchmen yes. series. Ooh. So the opening of Watchmen is the um, Tulsa massacre. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that I was watching a, a version of a real event. Oh, I didn't okay. know that that had happened. Isn't that frustrating? I insane. Yeah. It's insane. And, and, you know, after the fact, and they, there were the, um, the specials that came out, you know, the burning of black wall street and um, the um, Tulsa, I think it's, it was titled Tulsa massacre. There were two different specials that came yeah. out right around the same time. And, you know, they had interviews with people from Tulsa who grew up in the school system who did not know that this had happened in their yeah. town. Yeah. Um, there are laws on the books, yeah, whether they've been undone or not, that very clearly make it clear <laughs> that things were put in place for a reason mm -hmm. based on race um, and, and whatever. Um, so when people argue and have that knee jerk reaction, um, it's usually and I, I'm, I'm always looking for people's better angels. Um, it's usually because they just don't know. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, you know, just having my, my kind of mind blown by the fact yeah. that this, that this could occur and not be something that's taught on an ongoing basis mm -hmm. across our country is insane to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it, you know, just, just kind of keying in on that idea that people just don't know. Mm -hmm. And now, because the legislation is usually written by national organizations and then given to the state houses so that a representative can sponsor the bill, they don't know what's in the bill. <laughs> uh, Cameron had that experience when she was talking to one of these uh, people in, 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 in Columbus in Ohio. And this woman had actually didn't know what was in the bill that she was sponsoring Yeah, because she didn't write it. She got it from a <laughs> national organization. Wow. And so yeah. It's like, what are we doing? Yes, <laughs> exactly. My experience when I went to Tallahassee for the first time, I'm like, wow, this is how it works. This is very inefficient. It's like how I feel every time I go to the hospital. I was like, mm, I need to make some changes here. Like this shouldn't take this long to get, you know, a pillow or whatever it is you're looking for. It's just so inefficient. And it's there's a million reasons for it. But I feel like wow, but this is like the United States government. <laughs> it's like kind of scary, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it is. It's really sad because I always feel uninformed. So I'm constantly, and it sucks because you have to actually go out of your way to seek out this information. And it's not actually easy to find. I mean, other than the Google, but what I'm saying is it's like, these are things we should just kind of know and have been taught growing up as children because it's, our country. So I'm like, what was I learning in American history? <laughs> you know, cause like, it's just, yeah, it's all glossed over and, or not mentioned, like you said. And, um, and then we have to look to like future HBO fictional quote unquote shows to get like information on real life events. I mean, yeah. Same thing with, um, you know, HBO Max is warrior. Like people are like, wow. Oh, that was just like, this is like fiction. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of historical events that <laughs> happened there that have actually happened. Like these writing, these, you know, hangings, all of the, these things happened and people are like, what, you know, but it's a TV show. Like, yes, but <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, you know, which is why sometimes TV shows aren't just entertainment. Like you learn, but then again, you have to like do your research to learn more about it, watch a documentary on the actual events. And most people aren't willing to do that work. Right. So this is where we find Absolutely. those gaps, those gaps in education. And um, but speaking, speaking of um, TV. Oh, actually, before I go into that, um, we were going to talk about you learning to say no to things. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. I tried to get past that too. Um, <laughs> The, now we have uh, you on record and I can go, okay, look at um, this time frame in this podcast. <laughs> You're overdoing it, Brett. <laughs> you, you actually said no once. <laughs> um, no, I was on a call with a colleague and, and we were talking about a potential project and he goes, well, yeah. do you have time to take this on? And I'm like, no, I, I don't. Uh, you know, we were joking as we were, we were getting started here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm up to here. I got to lean back to get my nose above water to, <laughs> to be able to take a breath. Like I'm, I just got a lot going on at the moment. Yeah. And, I, and I've joked for years that being lazy and busy is a really bad combo. Um, <laughs> and I'm only half joking. Um, I, I enjoy my shutdown time at night and, and trying to clear my head and, and try to be productive versus busy. 
I think a lot of us mistake busy for, for productive, mm, uh, yeah. but I, but I do take on too much. Um, yeah. and, and that's always, that's been a problem for a long time. Um, but, um, I, I may actually be getting over the, the cusp and learning to say no. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a process, right? So it's not like all of a sudden we're cured and we can constantly put our self-care above all, but in incremental steps, right? So you said no, very good. Kudos. And um, next time, you know, as that goes on, you can, you can improve on that. And I know that you and I, one of the things that we've talked about a lot and one of the ways that we kind of unwind and, and have our entertainment is from, you know, some of the TV shows and movies. And, and what I love about um, our conversations is that we particularly enjoy that reread and rewatch concepts where it's like, sometimes you just don't want to be disappointed by taking on a new, program and just being like, what a waste of my time. Why, why did I even bother with this one? Like, I am okay with rewatching things that I know I've enjoyed, but maybe it's been so long. I don't have all the details or maybe not like Oscars rewatching Curb Your Enthusiasm for like the third time all the way through. And it's just at this point right now, for me, it's painful because, you know, it's like painful comedy, but um, we talked to you a lot about Battlestar Galactica. And so we were, we obviously we were rewatching that and we had to tell you about it. And my mind was blown that I didn't know in the middle of season two, you're supposed to stop and watch the razor movie. And then that there was a web series, like, and then I've talked to a lot of other people that also didn't know this existed. So like, how did we miss that? Because obviously you were in the know, but. <laughs> well, I, I think because uh, those things, if, if I'm correct, okay. those things kind of got, kind of got put in place after the fact. Okay. Like Razor did not come out in the middle of season two. Razor okay. came out at whatever time point. So, but that story fits at that time in the, in the series. I see. Okay. And so I, I think that was kind of like after they were done and they had filmed these extra movies, then it's, 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 um, okay. you know, going back and it's like watching the Marvel universe in actual order, yeah. order of, <laughs> that you should watch it, not the order that it came out. Um, Cause Captain America, the first Avenger, obviously as the title would indicate <laughs> should probably be where you start. <laughs> and so, um, why do you love Battlestar Galactica so much? Because you and I, we always talk about, we love it so much, but I'm curious as to like what it is about it for you. It's, it is, it's the story. It's the people, it's the stories. It's uh, it's, you know, Starbuck and uh, her, you know, what a great portrayal and, and just a, a, a great performance. And mm -hmm. um, you know, is she crazy uh, is, or is she actually, you know, uh, tapped into something that uh, is, is a little beyond, um, and you know, the father son dynamic, uh, the friend dynamic between Adama and, um, and Ty, um, it, you know, and then, yeah, I mean, it's just all those stories. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I think, um, you know, sci-fi almost has a freedom to, uh, go deeper into some of those situations. The, the backdrop is this fanciful or, or sci-fi sort of situation, but, the the that like I said that father son dynamic that friend dynamic the 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 really tumultuous uh, husband wife dynamic of Ty and and Ellen and and yeah. Ellen, and, Ellen. and uh, yeah I mean there's just but that's why I was watching it you know I I um, just the the stories are so powerful the the uh, those interpersonal things yeah and the characters I agree yeah. I think I think. If at the heart of most really good books and films and TV shows is that, right? Like if you have really great characters and storytelling and it, because I'll tell people how much I love it. They're like, oh, I don't like sci-fi. And I'm like, okay, yes, it's sci-fi because they're in a spaceship and there's space and, you know, we're in another time period that's like unknown, but like, um, it's not really sci-fi. Like you just said, it's really about relationships and about how those characters interact with one another. And of course there's that bigger thing of the sci scions and the, you know, the robots and all of that. But I think like it's, it's secondary to, to all of the relationships. And I just find it fascinating because I mean, spoiler alert for those who haven't seen that yet, <laughs> but like, it's just funny because it all comes full circle. Right. And then like at the end, you're just like, it's happened before and it shall happen again. And then um, you can get real meta with this and just like, wow, it's just kind of like living, right? Like when you see this and you go and you start to actually learn a little bit about history and you're like, 
Hmm. We're so horrified by the events of right now. And then we look back just a little bit, not even that far and go, oh, we didn't learn from that time. Oh, because we weren't taught it. So this is like really does tie back into everything we've talked about today. And yeah. um, it's just kind of, it's kind of frustrating <laughs> actually. And like a little depressing. It, it is. And I, and I think that, uh, you know, battle star is interesting in that uh, and, uh, again, spoiler uh, alert for the, so for those of you that haven't seen it yet, you may want to hit uh, fast forward for you know fifteen or twenty seconds here. Uh, but as you're watching it, and there's so much that's familiar w- within it. It's different, but it's but it's familiar. Mm-hmm. And um, but you get to the end, and you realize that this is something that happened long ago. And it's like, oh, wait a second. Like that just totally changes the, the perception. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it did like, oh my gosh, this, this wasn't a futuristic thing. Right. This, this was anachronistic. And, and now we're looking back and, and we're making those, to your point, we're making those same mistakes again. Mm-hmm. And so it's that for me, I got to the end of the series and I'm like, you know, yes. head, head explodes. Like, the oh my God. The series was very head exploding. In yeah. general, like there was just so much happening and like, that's why we really wanted to rewatch it. Cause it was so overwhelming at the time. Like I can't even really expect, like, I remember the end scenes, like in my mind of, you know, um, um, Lee in the field and then like how it fast forwards to like, you're seeing all the little modern day times, like the window displays and everything, but like all the stuff on the ship, like I, it's just like, it was so intense. There was so much going on. Um, but you're right. It was like, wait a minute. That was the past. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah. <laughs> and yet that's, that's why things were so familiar yet different. Mm-hmm. And, and like it, mm-hmm. it, for me, that, that ending just tied everything back together and, and uh, the, the, the 13 colonies and how they, yes. were made and, you know, all of that stuff. It, it's like, yeah, we, I, we weren't looking forward into the, into the future we were looking at at uh, a, a yeah. past that influenced us. So it's uh, I, I just, you know, strong, superior acting. And, and I, and I have oh. to say BBC, um, whether it's Battlestar Galactica or if it's uh, the Sherlock series or mm, unforgotten yes. or like so many, um, so many of these series, they are uh, their production quality, the acting the, you know, what they're doing is just super. Yeah. And Oscar and I kind of like laugh about this because we'll probably be dead or maybe not, but like we are told we've totally given in to the whole Cylons in our house. Like we talk to Siri, all my lights are controlled by whatever. I'm like, they're totally going to like take over and, and totally, I mean, it's totally going to be like Battlestar Galactica. And he's like, Oh, definitely. Um, what do you think? <laughs> do you think they're well, totally going to rise up and take over? Because we always tease because we don't have our own biological children that no one's taking care of us when we're older. I mean, having biological children also don't guarantee that, by the way, everybody, that right. you're having someone that's going to take care of you. So we always say we don't need money. We just need really good food. But we do need money in the future for our robot nurses because that's the only person that's going to take care of us. So um, but I, I mean, do you think like. Do you want to be that fly in the wall in like, uh, you know, however many years it is till till this actually happens? Um, it's probably around the corner, way closer than we think. Yeah. And there are some good articles and good information out there on AI and where we are with that. And there's um, it's way scarier than you think. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's it's actually because you um, because of the open sourcing and and the and the idea that in a lab someplace unbeknownst to other people, there's somebody that's ready to push the button and activate an AI. Um, And we're we're constantly making progress. And and there's 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 meetings on this within the Mm -hmm. computer um, programming world. Like now, since we're kind of at the precipice there's a variety of people going should we do this <laughs> yeah it's kind of uh, yeah i don't know because i mean on one hand like obviously modern technology has made our lives so convenient but i get 
that that, you know, that little those those people who we would quote call paranoid or, oh, you're just not adapting to the times. I kind of get the hesitance because, you know, if you've watched BSG too many times, like maybe like we have like we're like, oh, my God, they're going to rise up and take over. But they kind of might rise up and take over. Well, you know, we don't understand our own consciousness, intelligence mm-hmm. and, and existence. You know, we're, we're constantly struggling to, to understand that giving birth to a new consciousness um, and, and intelligence. Um, maybe we're not the people to be doing that because <laughs> we don't understand our own yet. Um, so, and then the thing, the thing that always you know, boggles my mind about that is um, anytime we're talking about consciousness, intelligence, uh, and researching the brain, that is the brain studying itself, um, yeah. which is just bizarre. Yeah, um, that's a little bit mind blowing. I'll be thinking about that all day. <laughs> she just said. Yeah, it's 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 a level of introspection and and investigation that's a little bizarre in mm-hmm. in the uh, in in the universe. And and I think that uh, yeah, we don't understand our own. Should we be giving birth to another? <laughs> I know. And I mean, that's kind of like, like I'm all for science and space exploration and understanding and doing all of that so that we can continue to evolve and adapt and everything. But I'm also a little bit like, well, there's a lot of things to fix on earth versus trying to find this, you know, new planet or the space race of like billionaires going up and just like, yeah, we flew around for five minutes and like resources going towards that versus like, so much that's going on here that needs fixing, you know? So there's, there's always that kind of struggle in my mind as well. Like, I don't know. Allocation of resources and time, you know, where, where do we want to, where do we want to put that? And uh, as long as there's a payoff and there's a connection in the end, I'm okay with the, the exploration and Mm -hmm. and expenditures, but there's, there's gotta be a connection at, at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Um, there's something I've been meaning to ask for seven episodes now, and I keep forgetting. And so I, I did actually write this one down. Um, and it's your Ask Brett Jones Facebook page. <laughs> Can you tell me what that means? And like <laughs> when you when you imagine, oh, Ask Brett Jones, and then you go to this page, all you get are these like crazy memes. Um, how did that start? And uh, talk to me about that. So uh, a gentleman, a uh, strong first instructor named Tim Schumann uh-huh. started it. He's in Orlando. Yes, he, he is in him. Orlando. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim's a great guy. Um, and uh, he uh, he started the page. I did not. And it was purely for the purpose of just like you said, it's uh, it's it's memes, it's jokes, it's uh, just funny stuff. I try to keep it PG, uh, <laughs> PG 13 at the most. Uh, we have some newer members that haven't got the memo uh, <laughs> about that, but um, and then people will get on and ask a serious question, like, "Oh, to your point, like, oh, ask Brett Jones. Hey, this is happening in my clean." And you know, some of the people that know that it's for <laughs> entertainment purposes will be like, "What are you doing?" Um, I'll answer the question. Like a Windex, like in the <laughs> article right. or something. This is how you now, clean. I'll. I'll answer the question because I want to, I want to honor that, Aww, that, that you're person, so nice. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's entertainment purposes. And it, it just mm. started really, it just started as a joke. Like Tim was just giving me a hard time about uh, all of my movie quotes and, and things. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, but it's fun. It's uh, I get a chuckle out of some stuff that gets posted there. Yeah. Yeah. I, it definitely wasn't what I expected because Oscar one day, and this is a long time ago, right. It was like, you need to see this website, this Facebook page. I'm like, you know, I don't go on Facebook. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one's called Ask Brett Jones. I'm like, oh, okay. Does he do like Q&A? And, you know, and so I've been meaning to ask you about it because it's been years. And it's funny because we were talking about, oh, this is our four years since we've really like um, been been speaking and connecting. But it's I, I think in one of our episodes, we talked about that actual first time that I met you, which was in Orlando at one of the kettlebell certifications and everything. And I was like in your little, um, I was the people that came in to like, that didn't know anything so that the trainers could show if they were teaching or not. And I was like, I want to be in Brett Jones's group because I've heard him in my house for like (laughs) years on video and I need to make sure I get in his group. And so like, they literally like put me in your group because I'm, you know, me, I'm very, persuasive. <laughs> and so, 
Absolutely. But I mean, obviously you don't remember that time, but I do. And, and luckily we did, I did make Oscar take a picture with you. And um, so, yeah, it's just like, it's just crazy how long, how time goes so quickly. And, um, and now we're talking about the silence taking over. <laughs> well, and, you know, I recently put out an article on strong first 20 years, 20 observations. And, and, you know, it was February of 02 that I got certified with Pavel and I started teaching with him the next year. Yeah. So, you know, 20 years of being certified with him and 19 years of teaching with him. And um, it, it is just bizarre to look back uh, over that time frame, And, um, and, and I can't imagine uh, you know, there, there, there's pivotal decisions, uh, in your, in your life. And that was certainly one of them, the, the decision to go, to get a kettlebell and go get certified. And, um, you know, just, I don't know where I would be, um, <laughs> had I not made that, that one decision. And yeah, uh, at the time, everybody's like, uh, it's a fad and, you know, nobody will be doing this in five years. And I'm like, right. no, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. This is going to, this is going to last. Yeah. Um, so it, yeah, but it's to have that, time in, uh, so to speak, pardon me, is, is really, um, it's, it, it's a mind bender at times. Like I just, I, I, cause I, I feel like I just got started. <laughs> Well, it doesn't look that way because, of course, I follow you on IG and Oscar and I are just like, seriously, that's what he's doing now. And especially, you know, all that you've been through and everything and just like coming back stronger and just um, super inspiring stuff. So we're Thank we're you. always we're always in awe of you. But um, but it's been it's been awesome just like on a personal level to be able to have conversations with you on and off air. And um, yeah, we, we always we, we actually always kid about it. I'm like, yeah, all of the people I enjoy talking to don't live in my city so much like it's interesting like you have these connections with people and i always ask people is it because they don't live here so there's like not too much <laughs> of one person and you're like oh i really enjoy them because they're not like here but i don't know it just it just works out that way <laughs> definitely i mean i've got the same situation and, and you know i've worked from home for coming on eight or so years now and um and, and have been doing online training and, and you mm -hmm. know uh remote working i mean at I've got people that I work with that are in Italy and just yeah, from a work perspective, zones. not even from a, a student perspective, but you know um, it's Italy. It, it was Denver, California, uh, just all over yeah. the place. And so the only way to connect is virtually and, and um, you know, nobody's in my hometown. I was joking earlier that my, my one friend one in friend. Pittsburgh, <laughs> you know, wants to, wants to go grab lunch. Um, and I'm trying to fit that into my schedule. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, it is interesting because um, it, it, um, the old thing to, that I think kind of correlates, um, I don't know, my stories don't always have points, but, uh, um, <laughs> but they're always good. You, know, you, you can become friends with someone you don't know who's a roommate. It's really hard to make your friend a roommate. <laughs> um, that usually ends friendships, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, there's, there is that idea that, uh, you know, if maybe if you were around me on a more regular basis, you'd be like, yeah, no. <laughs> I was thinking the reverse and you'd be like, oh my God, she's here again. Well, this is not true because I usually show up with food and things. So usually people are like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm in. I'm but in. I can be a lot. So <laughs> I would think it would be the reverse, you know, it would, um, it would absolutely be the reverse. We'd, we'd be uh, breaking bread on a regular basis. Definitely. Definitely. hundred percent. So, um, well, we're coming up on our hour. So I have, I'll have you on again and not in such a long period of time. I think, I think we need to, to catch up, but in uh, keeping with the theme of self-care, feel free to say no, if you don't have the time for it and I won't be offended, but I know that we will catch up at some point again. So, but it's always a pleasure, Brett, to catch up and thanks for doing so on air and Brett Jones, everybody. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mimi. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Chan on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook.